Hey everybody, I'm back and unsurprisingly, I have a very tragic, horrific issue to discuss today. Like I've mentioned in some of my videos in the past, another day, another gun massacre. In the aftermath of the Orlando massacre, obviously the issue of gun control has come to the fore in a major way yet again. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to follow up on one of my videos from last fall in which I laid out the libertarian case, what I believe to be a totally legitimate case for some degree of gun control. So I thought it would make sense to follow up on that video with my thoughts as to the particular kinds of gun control that I think can be justified. But before I even get to that, I think that there are some major misconceptions in this whole controversy that need to be cleared up. We hear a great deal, especially at this moment, about assault weapons, assault rifles, and so on. Now this is possibly the greatest area of confusion and misconception in connection with the gun control controversy in modern American society. There is a technical definition of the term assault rifle, specifically. An assault rifle is not just any gun that looks military style, that bears a resemblance to actual military standard issue firearms. An assault rifle is a fully automatic shoulder weapon. What does fully automatic mean? It means that it's the kind of gun that sprays bullets continuously when you pull the trigger once and hold it down. In other words, what's commonly referred to as a machine gun. M16 rifles, like the ones that you see in use in the US military, standard issue shoulder rifles. Those are assault rifles, fully automatic. AK-47s are fully automatic assault rifles. But the guns that we hear so much about currently used so often, especially in recent years, by mass shooters like Omar Mateen in, in Orlando are not fully automatic weapons and therefore it is not accurate to call them assault rifles. Those guns, most notoriously the AR-15, are semi-automatic and in that respect they're similar to the majority of guns that law-abiding American citizens purchase. Now what does semi-automatic mean? It means that the gun only fires one round with each individual pull of the trigger. If you pull the trigger of an AR-15 one time, even if you hold it down, it will only fire one round. Only when you release the trigger will it pop another bullet into place to get it ready to fire the next shot. It chambers another round. That's the automatic part of the semi-automatic terminology. It automatically reloads a new bullet after you release the trigger. But if you hold down the trigger, it won't spray bullets. It's not a continuous fire machine gun. That's what makes it semi-automatic as opposed to fully automatic. Guns that aren't automatic at all will require you not only to pull the trigger and release it in order to fire the next round, but you'll have to cock it like a shotgun or pull back the hammer or what have you. So that's the difference between these three different main categories of guns. Now, the term assault weapon as opposed to assault rifle is not a technical term that was devised by actual experts on firearms. It was devised by politicians in the late 1980s when they needed to come up with a new category of firearms so that they could regulate and to some extent ban them, particularly from 1994 to 2004 during the era of the so-called assault weapons ban. Assault weapon is a made up term made up by politicians who generally don't know what they're talking about when it comes to guns. Clearly they couldn't be bothered to do their research. I don't know any of this firsthand either. I've never touched a, a, a firearm of any kind as far as I know in my entire life. And I'm not a fan of guns myself. But what do you know? Not only am I acquainted with people who are gun experts or at least gun enthusiasts, I also bothered to do some research into the subject and that's where I gleaned all of this information. I don't know why these politicians can't be bothered to do the same or at least have their assistants do the research for them and report back to them. I thought that's what assistants were for, but anyway. So it's not accurate to throw around this term assault rifle. As for us saying that these weapons like the AR-15 or the Sig Sauer rifle that the Orlando shooter actually used. He didn't use an AR-15. He used a similar but different semi-automatic rifle. To call those assault rifles is simply inaccurate. To call them assault weapons is sort of obfuscatory. It doesn't really clarify the issue. I actually read an article in The Economist magazine recently. To its credit, it actually acknowledged what I just pointed out. Here's The Economist's take on it, and I quote, if an AR-15 can be used to assault large crowds of people, killing and maiming scores of them on multiple occasions, it qualifies as an assault weapon. 
I disagree. I think The Economist has this one wrong. Any gun can be used to kill and maim large numbers of people, particularly in these kinds of mass shootings. That doesn't only apply to AR-15s. It applies to all semi-automatic guns, and indeed, I would say it arguably probably applies to non-automatic firearms as well. In these mass shootings, the shooters generally target places like nightclubs where their victims will not be in a position to defend themselves meaningfully, they won't be armed, they're generally not trained in armed or unarmed combat, and most importantly, they're taken by surprise. The shooters always have the element of surprise. Given the surprise and the trauma, their victims generally aren't really in a position to fight back against them meaningfully. So even if they had to use guns where they had to cock a hammer back or where they weren't able to spray bullets continuously as with an actual fully automatic assault rifle, they would still probably be able to kill large numbers of people in a short space of time. The Virginia Tech shooter back in 2007 didn't use any shoulder weapons at all of any kind, let alone an AR-15 or a Sig Sauer. The Virginia Tech shooter managed to kill 32 people and wound 17 others with only two handguns, two semi-automatic handguns. He didn't need to use a shoulder weapon at all. And that's part of the reason I'm skeptical of a lot of these proposals to ban certain categories of guns that have become notorious in recent years thanks to these mass shootings, most notoriously the AR-15. It's not as if mass shooters need that kind of gun to inflict this carnage. With not much greater difficulty, or maybe not any more difficulty at all, they could carry out the same kind of carnage with the other guns, the handguns and so on, that are also semi-automatic, that are left on the market, that these bans wouldn't reach. That's part of the problem. And when you consider the statistics on gun crime in the United States, when you consider that most gun deaths are actually suicides, and then most of the gun homicides are carried out by, you know, professional criminals, drug dealers, gang members, and they're generally drug-related, and the vast majority of them are committed with handguns, not with shoulder weapons of any kind, it becomes a lot harder to justify a ban on a gun like the AR-15. It's harder to see exactly what good it would do. I seem to remember Senator Marco Rubio, from Florida no less, arguing in the aftermath of the San Bernardino killings that, you know, I think it was universal background checks and an assault weapons ban and assault weapons ban and certain other measures that were being advocated and proposed would not have prevented the San Bernardino shootings. The Washington Post actually analyzed his statement and guess what they found? They had to agree. They admitted you know what? He was probably right. These measures being proposed right now probably would not have prevented the San Bernardino massacre. In fact, the Washington Post looked at the most popular gun control proposals that were on the table at the time and that still are on the table today and looked at all of the mass shootings dating back to the Newtown massacre and found that none of the mass shootings that had taken place in the country would have been prevented by the gun control measures that were being proposed. You can carry out these kinds of mass shootings. As The Economist put it, you can use a number of guns other than the AR-15 to assault large crowds of people, killing and maiming scores of them on multiple occasions. So it makes no sense to simply use that, uh, that kind of definition of an assault weapon. And then, of course, any weapon at the end of the day can be used to carry out an assault. I don't know that banning AR-15s or other similar weapons would do much good. One of the sources I've included below this video is an infographic that includes a number of sources that will show you a lot of the criteria that politicians have used in the past to classify guns as assault weapons. A lot of them are just cosmetic. The AR-15 actually doesn't fire at any higher a rate than regular semi-automatic hunting rifles and shotguns and semi-automatic handguns of the kind that are used to carry out the vast majority of gun homicides in the United States. It actually can't fire bullets any faster than they can, but it has cosmetic features, such as a general superficial resemblance to standard military, standard issue uh, shoulder weapons that a lot of people find scary on an aesthetic level. But those features don't actually enhance the lethality of the weapon. They don't actually make it a more effective or efficient instrument of death and harm. So. While I do think that certain forms of gun control can be required and are necessary, I think it's important for people to get their facts straight and to really look closely at to what degree the proposed gun control measures would be likely to achieve their stated objective. It's not enough for these laws to be well motivated. It's not enough for the people advocating these reforms to have their hearts in the right place. The laws, the policies have to do some good. And I would be saying that even if the U.S. Constitution did not contain the Second Amendment 
with its protection of an individual right to bear arms. And yes, I do believe the Second Amendment has always protected an individual right to bear arms, not a collective right or a government right. It doesn't really make much sense anyway when you get right down to it once you examine the concept of a right in the first place. That's my take for this particular video. I just wanted to look at a lot of those factual misconceptions and try to clear those up to the best of my ability. 